Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Nelly Deutsch. This is um, the last um, day of MMVC 1-4, and this is the fourth year. Actually, I have to uh, confess that Ludmilla and I uh, began 2011 in 2011 when we planned to have uh, the conference in Cancun face-to-face <laughs> -face as a vacation spot and learn together. But uh, as I said, it went online, but that's just something that um, I don't know if you remember that, Ludmilla. Um, I don't think Ludmilla needs an introduction. Um, she's a very close friend. And I think that's uh, no secret. We work uh, together. We're colleague, friends, and uh, I guess almost like sisters, virtual sisters, because we only meet a couple times a year. Uh, we don't live in the same area. Ludmilla is very passionate about sharing everything she knows about teaching and ideas. Uh, she is a caring person. And if I go on talking about you, I'll probably start crying. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, so Ludmilla is going to be talking about designing and teaching a uh, Moodle course. I'm not going to take any more of your time. And I'm going to stay in the background. So thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you, Ludmilla, for... Um... Uh, I hope you hear me well. Uh, if you hear me well, please show your faces, faces, <laughs> your smiley faces. It would be great. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Um, so I, uh, for a couple of conferences, virtual conferences, um, in the summer, I was asked to share my experience about teaching, designing, and teaching, implementing uh, courses online. So, um, and when uh, Mary again um, invited to participate in this MOOC, I decided to um, share my experience again because I noticed that um, the audience that was participating in those conferences um, and the teachers, educators who were this, at my sessions, they were really very interesting and grateful for sharing this experience. So um, if some of you were at my previous sessions, so bear with me and uh, as Latin uh, saying says, repetitio is mother studiorum. A repetition is mother of study. So, uh, thank you, thank you for telling me that uh, the sound is good and you hear me well. All right, so let's proceed. And um, what I would like to uh, tell is that uh, the, when you start thinking about uh, designing a course, so you have to keep uh, the following aspects. This diagram is really a representation uh, of uh, designing uh, an implementation of the course. So you have several, um, several aspects. So you um, start with the design, development, and evaluation is always present. I always, these are the major elements of any course design. And uh, within uh, these three elements, you also have your start design with the objectives. Uh, you think about the resources. You select the resources. And align with objectives, you think you either design or you select activities that would help you uh, achieve your uh, objectives. And um, after you design all these things, you implement 
your idea, your design into practice. And then again, you go back and you evaluate what you did, and then you start back, uh, improve your design, you um, develop your course, and you look at your objectives, but on a higher level, and you again select resources that will, so this is a really, that's what this diagram shows. And um, just to have um, to start you thinking about that. So I would tell you, that, um, you shouldn't be afraid of uh, being dirty because the design is clear. And you design, it's all in your thoughts. It's a cognitive process. But when you start implementing your course, you get dirty. But it's okay. And it's okay to make mistakes. Be ready for them. Uh, and immerse yourself. And at the same time, immerse your students. They will go with the same process. They will get dirty, and it's okay. I mean, for example, I noticed in, in the American culture, students from the very beginning, from school, they are afraid of making mistakes. They want to be perfect, but it, 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 you cannot leave without making mistakes. You learn from your mistakes and you improve yourself. So it's okay to make mistakes. And uh, without mistakes, you won't learn. So, and I always um, also say that um, I, I really like uh, to invite you, like in, to invite you to think about the design and implementation of uh, courses using Julie uh, Salmon, Salmon's uh, diagram, and it has five stages. When you think about the design and then implementation of the course, you start always with uh, how the course is going to be accessed and how you will motivate your students. Then, how do you create the online socialization? Because, like students come to school, they want to socialize. The same, the same about online, uh, um, online learning, and it's it's more important because it, the students do not see a teacher, and they don't know students. So it's very, very, very important to create this environment where students can socialize, when learners can socialize. And then when all these created so you students feel comfortable, you create environment for information exchange. And then um, after they exchange the information, the concept that they learned, and they are comfortable of exchanging, they start constructing knowledge. And then they develop their own uh, concept, their own constructs. Um, and it all happens through interactivity. And uh, it really brings up learning. Students are learning while they are interacting with each other. So now I would like, using this model, using this framework, I would like to share how it looks like in the course design and implementation. So we start with uh, the first stage, access and motivation. So what is important during this stage? So you are to welcome students. You have to reassure that they will be all right, though it's an online classroom, they will survive. And they encourage their learning. You, you are to provide a roadmap for their learning and uh, make them feel relaxed and provide them tools to play and uh, always uh, point to technical support. 
it's uh, like in our with IQ class on the bottom here we have live support chat so if we have problems we know that there is a place we can ask for technical support so these this is the stage where uh, <clears throat> where we uh, really create this environment of uh, students when they feel comfortable and that's the first st steps for students' motivation to learn. It's okay that the teacher is not, not in class and the teacher is not always with us, but we know that there are places where I can get the information and I know where to get the support and it creates really um, um, an environment for students' um, a proper and effective access to the course and they are motivated to learn. This is an example of uh, how I welcome my students to the course. I usually create either um, a portrait, a, um, a poster of students' names uh, using either using Wordle or Tuxedo. Tuxedo allows you to uh, to create a, 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 um, a word cloud with a shape, some shape, apple or a key or some other shapes you can choose from depending on the talk. Um, and or you can create a word cloud with the course concepts. And there is an idea you can also select all your thank you tell. Uh, you can select all your um, uh, the syllabus and put the syllabus into Wordle. And uh, when you put syllabus into Wordle, it will create the word cloud and some of the concepts that are repeated in the course, they become big. So, and immediately you create the welcome to the course and you immediately uh, give students what the course will be about. And um, I also do, um, and uh, tell, actually showed um, <clears throat> MoveNote um, reference and a link. So I use MoveNote where I explain, I create a video, a slide, a slideshow of the course, um, of the course content and course places where students get all the information and I create this um, video for, and uh, MoveNote allows you to add slideshow either, even from the Google Docs. You create the slideshow of the course screenshots of the course and then you record and you, you make students feel welcomed. You, you make students feel comfortable with this. And we've got more examples as we go further. So this is an example of uh, the course design on Moodle. And so I use, um, there is a special uh, plugin on Moodle uh, 2.6 and further. It's called One Topic that allows you to create a, a really very nice, a nice layout. Um, and students immediately see um, the whole course and when they click here it will be welcome. I usually call the zero uh, model. Uh, it's called uh, I call it start here, so the students would know where to start. And in the first uh, tab, there will be all the information about the course. And uh, so, in this will be tabs for other courses instead of uh, previous model when it becomes a long tail and all the course will go down and sometimes students get lost. Here you really can make it look nice and compact and concise. So this is the example of the course and they see the teacher and uh, I usually have the students' names here and students see the names. Sometimes I, I have pictures of students. I make a collage of students' pictures, like Mary created a collage of presenters of this MOOC. So it really makes uh, students at home. They will be with you for the whole month. And 
and that's why you really have to create this atmosphere of welcoming and and comfortable um, comfortable environment so uh, and so these are uh, this is um, how I organize in start here I have uh, course materials and guidelines the students know uh, when they click on this book and this is uh, a tool on Moodle that allows you create chapters and sub chapters and so you create course materials and guidelines they know that they uh, and I always tell the students this is the place to start the course and you come back to this if you forgot about some guidelines so you go back and they are always there for you I also create a special book for video tutorials how to how to add pictures how to create hyperlinks how to how to uh, add videos so just to make students uh, feel comfortable and I create those um, tutorials so that they would know where to go to get help. Um, tips and tricks of planning, depending again on the course that you are teaching. So you can create tips and tricks of uh, completing assignments. And I, uh, I also create a special forum for students to, uh, to show them samples of the best work and um, sometimes I like to do it sometimes I don't because sometimes when you show students samples they think that this is the best and they copy some of the things sometimes I think it really uh, can impact their creativity and but I still uh, offer this and I always tell students this is um, this is just an example please make it better make unique make your own uh, so that I will use your example to share with my next class so I also create a special um, um, lounge um, students lounge course lounge where students and it's for students interaction where they can ask questions share concerns and this this is that will be their place and I uh, usually say, okay, you ask each other questions, help each other out. And if I see that something uh, is not, the answer, the question is not answered or concern is not resolved, I will intervene. I also create a special forum for peer feedback. And students know from the very beginning that during the course, because I usually teach, I teach in the teacher program and I really develop students reflective practitioners I want them always to reflect I was always to give each other feedback and I always tell them that this is the community where you can learn uh, and get help from because this is your laboratory that's where you learn how to become the best teacher possible so and also in Moodle 2.5 and uh, six and further uh, there is a checklist so you can also design so that all these things can be clickable and become tra traceable um, so the, there is a track of the activities and they have to really be um, visit these things in order to uh, to work uh, to learn how to learn better so, so it means that the stage, the first stage, is about settling in. They have to feel relaxed because they know and they know each other. And this one of my requirements is sometimes I, I really buy students um, joining the course. I sometimes can tell that they were not using Moodle. They were not using technology. They come to my course without faces. They don't have e their pictures in the course. And that's why my first requirement is I would like to associate the name with the face. And I teach them how to access the same Mary was doing in, uh, in the beginning of the course. So you, 
um, students learn how to add pictures. They provide a little bit of information about themselves. And they now know each other using the faces. Um, they know how to navigate. You introduce them to navigation. You provided special information about that. They now are connected. I usually also, what I usually do, I, I provide a lot of questionnaire surveys to find out what students' uh, strengths are and what, what they know, what skills they have. And uh, I, I provide a choice activity in Moodle where students show. And I say, who, uh, please check those uh, tools that you are comfortable using or you used before. So um, a wiki who, who has blogs, who, uh, who knows how to write good forum discussions. And they all select. And then when an or other, I also have other tools where I, um, other questionnaires where they show the experience online learning. And all these strengths I use in order to create groups. I create groups based on those strengths. And then each group will have expert in wiki, expert in blog, expert in discussions, expert in uh, web, um, website design, and so on and this, so forth. When they start uh, collaborating in groups, uh, then uh, there will be somebody who would always support and help uh, each other. So in, another important aspect is to uh, teach students about e uh, an etiquette, internet e etiquette. So how to communicate online. It's different from in class. So and uh, how you have to welcome, how to, you have to write an email to the professor, how you have to communicate in the chat how you um, respond to post discussions, what is, what is expected of you to become a global citizen online. So it's very important, and students have to know. And there is a, a wonderful site, Netiquette. If you go Google on 10 rules of Netiquette, and you will get this, the link to that website. It's, um, it's really there are 10, to, 10 um, rules that uh, students have to follow in order to be um, global citizens on in the on the internet. How to communicate? So that's why our learner becomes uh, re feel relaxed and motivated to learn because um, all these things were done on the first stage, and this prepares us for the next stage, uh, which is online socialization. Uh, we create a community of learners. And this is another example of my course design where I selected students' um, pictures. And I created a chart or a poster with their names, a collage of their uh, faces. And sometimes I add names. Um, and that's what. Uh, that's what uh, best practices show that the best way to create to create this uh, community uh, learning environment is to personalize your course, and you personalize it through uh, images, through collages, through videos, and uh, special design, selecting colors. Um, so, and as I said, I design uh, using Google Docs. I create learners profile surveys. And I ask students what they know in the beginning of the course. And I ask about some concepts that will be major in my courses. I teach different courses. I teach literacy and technology. I teach social studies methods. Uh, this semester, I will be teaching um, literature, children's literature. Um, and so I usually ask what you know in the beginning of the course. And um, another, um, uh, another survey I do, needs assessment, and where I provide three-column 
a chart where students say what skills they have, what skills are missing, this will be their goals, and the last column they will use in the end of the course, which uh, it, it means what I learned, which, uh, which goals I met. And um, so usually in the beginning, I also ask when they check those goals, and that will be probably around 15, 50 skills, 50 skills mentioned on each uh, each part of the course, content knowledge, uh, technical knowledge, pedagogical knowledge. So all these sections where students have to mention what they know, what they don't know. And then they have to summarize in the end. So what they know and what they, what they are wrong, personal. And that's how you really create um, the, when students have their personal goals, not my goals. I have my goals. This is my syllabus. But they have to have their own goals, and then they really become motivated. And the needs assessment survey really helps to do that. <clears throat> I also uh, enjoy doing and invite students to uh, think about the class rules, what they want this classroom to be like, and collaboration rules, too. And sometimes I send them to Pinterest. Uh, and look for boards with classroom rules and select or create their own boards, uh, rules, and they share on the discussion forum. And then we all discuss and see what is common in everybody's suggestions. And we select uh, our personal, our class rules, and they become our rules. And they create those rules, not me. Um, uh, forcing on them the rules, they create their own rules. Uh, group choice is also very important. Um, the, I already explained how I do it, and I give them options. Sometimes I uh, ask them which who they want to work with. Sometimes I assign groups, and sometimes um, uh, I I do. Usually, I have students work throughout the semester is in groups. And sometimes there are projects they, that uh, I create specific topic groups and students select, select what, who they want to work with or what topics they want to work on. And it, then it becomes, again, different. But because we have cl collaboration rules and that they know that they will be say, evaluating each other, for their contributions, for their responsibility, accountability. They know it from the beginning. That's where you set, set, set all the rules in the beginning so that they would know. And another um, important thing is that I usually, when I teach course online, well, different professors teach differently. And so because it's a teaching course, Teach a Future Teachers course, I love to te to meet with them live in on um, like in with IQ and our college is using uh, Adobe Connect. So during the week they work on their own, and uh, we week uh, biweekly. So one week we meet as a whole class where I give um, um, I pr uh, give them very short brief. Uh, lectures and introduction to the whole week. I explain what, what the assignments are. Then we have group discussions and I send them to, to work and then they come back and we discuss what the projects of the week are. And the next week um, would be group week. And that's why I assign, I, um, I assign facilitators. There is a wonderful uh, if you uh, look on uh, YouTube, there is a wonderful video about uh, how what what a good facilitator is, and I usually show students what a good facilitation is, what facilitators are responsible for. Students usually um, the facilitators are setting up the online. Classroom. They invite the rest of the group. They set up the agenda. They copy the agenda from the course uh, materials, 
and they uh, go, um, they set up the uh, class uh, group discussion and they keep focus. Um, and it's really, this is real teach, teaching them to become leaders. That's how, and throughout different weeks, because there are 15 weeks during the semester, and so everybody becomes a facilitator at least once or twice, depending on the uh, amount of students in the class. But they all learn how to run an online class. So it's very important. Um, and uh, so, and then group choice, this is an example of how uh, I set up choice activity on uh, Moodle. And they will design and they choose Sometimes, um, uh, sometimes I, I uh, for example, my husband, when he teaches the course, he has students and he um, set up group work according to time. Uh, and everybody t uh, chooses the time they can meet together. Evening time, morning time, afternoon time, that's how he creates his groups in, in graduate class. So uh, there are different ways of doing this, but the main thing is thinking about it and give students options and make them uh, cre creators of the course that we are teaching. We are teaching, but I, I, I prefer to say not teach, I coach, I facilitate, I, I'm a, an active participant, equal participator in the course. So, and it's very, in order to create a community of learners, it's important to select some ice-breaking activities in the beginning of the course. And I, I have quite a few, and the literature shows also a number of those. Um, and um, so one of my uh, projects I love to do in the beginning of the course, and again, um, introducing the tools for students, technology tools. What I do, I offer my students to introduce themselves using Web 2.0 tools. Uh, Volki, uh, Glockster, create a blog, create a, a, a Kahoot questionnaire. Kahoot is a game, a very competitive game when students, when they know from the beginning of the course and they use it all the time. Um, or use Socrative to create questionnaire about yourself and ask, uh, engage students to ask you, uh, to ask you questions. Create a wiki, create, so there are so many, uh, to Pinterest, uh, create a uh, Facebook and, and invite everybody. So the, you really can, um, so, and what happens is, you see, during first week, there are 355 responses to each other. So it, it, it really helps to create community of in, an interaction. The students start collaborating and discussing things. And they, uh, the requirement is to post your project online, uh, make sure that the link works, and uh, make your presentation or your, your link or your site uh, public, we you know from the beginning. And, and then come back and, yes, voice thread, for example, right. I, I, um, this is one of the options. So, and, um, so, and then they have to post their own and then come back and respond to a couple of other students' posts. So it really creates an atmosphere of interaction and communication. They really communi communicate with, e with each other. And uh, one more uh, activity I do, and I'm proud of it. So, um, what in the past when um, I taught in-person class without technology, what I did, I asked students during my last class to write l welcome letters to my future classroom students. And what what it was what was it what was it like to be a student of Dr. Smirnova? What was you know, so give give your words of wisdom to to your to the future students? What they have to keep in mind to become successful in the course? 
And so what happened is students, um, student wrote letters, and when my new class comes, I post on the discussion forum, I post letters, I give numbers to the uh, to each letter, and then I assign letters to my class, uh, my students, and they have to read the letter and select what was, uh, I give three options, three characteristics, what was comfortable, what was scary, what was comforting, and what was challenging, something like this, three, four, a thing that they have to read and focus on. So in the students, students read letters and write and respond to each, or sometimes I assign the same letter to two students and then it, it is my trick, and then I ask, compare your letters, what, what did you, what is common, what is different, what was your fear, what was your fear? And then by the end of the discussion, they all see that they have common common fears, they all come, uh, common goals, they, they, and they all know that what was makes comfortable, most of my students wrote that Dr. Smith normally is available 24-7, and so just don't hesitate to ask questions. They give advice. They give pieces of advice for my future students, and it makes them feel comfortable. They know that it's the course is the course is challenging, so they're, they're, but they all survived. They all survived, and they um, they succeeded. So uh, this is very important. So that's how you create community of learners. You establish their identities through their. Uh, posts when they present their projects about me projects, uh, they learn about each other, they uh, see that how good they are and what their strengths are, uh, they start interacting with each other, they understand how to build social connections, and they are they realize value of socialization for learning because com com uh, really they have common, they have much in common, and they are here to learn and support each other in that learning. And so uh, that brings students to the next stage where you set up the environment for information exchange. And Moodle has it all. So in Moodle tools really allow um, to create environment for information exchange through um, through discussion forum, through uh, glossary. I saw that there was a, uh, Virginia was saying about glossary, about um, data, about um, a lesson, about. You can set up class blog, or you can add blogs, a link, links to the blogs of students. You can set up uh, chats. You can set up wiki, um, and uh, and you also can um, to each class, to each um, personal. Uh, I mean, the uh, class <coughs> during the class. You can um, create a Titan pad. Uh, it's a back channel where students can take notes of the class and see what um, what what they take from each class. And it's it's really interesting uh, that you give the, the same information to the whole class, but everybody takes something. Uh, of their own, and sometimes somebody misses something, but they can exchange this information on the back channel and and use it uh, later on. So it, it's really wonderful. And by the way, um, there is this community, um, simple uh, K through 12. Um, they don't use uh, WizIQ or they don't use Adobe Connect. They use uh, go to meetings, but during their sessions. Uh, they uh, mute their chats and everything, but they use um, Titan Pad for back channel, and they provide all the links there. And the teachers, uh, the teachers post them. Really, uh, yes, it's a personalized, uh, personalized learning uh, path. Exactly. That's 
uh, exactly what's happening. So these are the Moodle tools that um, the, the teacher, when designing a course, uses in order to um, provide information exchange. Uh, there are also uh, other tools uh, outside Moodle that is good to em employ, and, and those tools are Twitter, and I, I usually create a Twitter and hashtag for the class, and sometimes I do in the evening, I would uh, assign students to uh, share something or ask questions, and they all go and ask questions, or you can set up and uh, assign students to look for great educators, and there are interesting tweets, and there are hashtags, and there are ed tech talks, uh, um, where students can uh, gain the informa information, so you can search for hashtags, uh, educational hashtags on Twitter, and become part of it, and participate, and um, it's really wonderful. I use LiveBinder for students to create their electronic portfolios of the course, and I used to use PBWorks, uh, PB but I love live binders because when I create uh, a template in the beginning of the course, I create a template for students to to do the electronic portfolio in the end of the course, but they use it during the whole semester. And what is wonderful, when they create their own um, accounts on live binders, the easiest way to copy, in, in, in PBWorks, I, they had to go to my template copy the part of the portfolio and bring to their own. But on, on uh, live binders, it, there is a function copy. And when they have their own account, they go to mine and they click copy. And my template comes right to their, uh, to their uh, live binder account. And uh, they just, what is left is just to replace. And I have to each tab, uh, I have my philosophy, my website, my goals, my blog, my um, field work, my lesson plans. So they have these tabs and my requirements on them. And they just then replace with their, con their, uh, their, own, con um, their own content. It's really wonderful. So I also use um, a web quest. Um, <clears throat> Thank you very much, for everybody, for sharing. So these are the tools that most of that I use. Jing, screencast automatic and students are using those to share the, what they learned, what, uh, and um, to show that you really learn, you, you teach others. Sometimes I ask, students ask questions, or when they learn something, they say, Dr. Svidrova, I got it, I got it. I said, okay, go to the discussion forum and share what you learned to teach others. The best way to teach that you learn is to teach others. And that's what the students learn from this interaction and information exchange. Um, so really, today's education is not how much you know. The education today is what you do with what you know. And these Web 2.0 tools really help you. For example, scoop it. So you not only know and learn from others what exactly happens on the internet, but you curate. You, you invite other people to pay attention that with this tool you can do this, with this tool you can do this, and information exchange. That's what's very important in any process of learning. So I, I feel like I have to move on quickly. So that was third stage. And this, this information exchange stage really prepares students for knowledge construction. Because now they, they really felt comfortable. They have the tools to exchange information. They are ready to active learning. So they become active online, they uh, create, <coughs> they run in a social context, they collaborate in groups, they construct new knowledge based on interaction, they meet in their groups and they exchange, the, the, the requirement for group work is, before they come, 
for the meeting online with a group, they have to read, uh, do the readings before they meet with each other. They have to be aware of the tasks that they have to do. And then they meet online as a group. They exchange. They make uh, their contribution and really uh, they draw on each other's skills and experiences. They uh, collaborate, negotiate, debate. They peer review and mentor each other's work. And they reflect. And that's a requirement in all my courses. I, re I uh, They set up their blogs in the beginning of each semester. And they reflect uh, in the end of each week. They reflect on their learning. And reflection really brings their learning to the highest level. And they, uh, with the help of these old steps, they construct deep understanding. Uh, <clears throat> and this is the link in my active uh, presentation for examples, uh, for different examples from best practices. Um, yes. And uh, so I already said that I usually have synchronous and asynchronous uh, modes of learning. So during the week, they uh, work on the assignments and tasks asynchronously. And on the weekend, they, um, they we either, or in the beginning of the next week, on Mondays, usually I meet synchronously, either as a whole class, or the next week they meet as a group, and they uh, during a whole week class, they do individual assignments and activities and tasks and submit their individual assignments. And during the group week, they do group projects and they are responsible to contribute and also evaluate each other. So they construct knowledge. And asynchronous tools inside Moodle are so as I uh, mentioned before, creating glossaries. And you can um, set up your own glossary. Or uh, to make students, again, construct knowledge, they have to find the definitions of the course concepts. Exactly my favorite <laughs> concept of collective intelligence. You create a community of collective intelligence. And so students can. Uh, you can make this um, glossary uh, accessible by everybody. And students create definitions. They create um, terms. They select terms. And they post. And they can reflect on each other's posts. It's really help, too. So this is glossary. It's a tool inside Moodle. Um, adding a wiki. A wiki can be a group wikis and they can be also individual wikis and they uh, they um, they post their work and if it's collaborative you know that you can check students contributions in the wiki database activity I love it and it allows to create database of all the resources about the content um, it may be websites, so media, uh, videos, and images. So you set up the template for students, and the students then add to database, and they create the database on the cons content um, methods or uh, resources for classrooms, and so on and so forth. Um, Lesson module is a wonderful tool on Moodle that allows create lessons, uh, several lessons. And what is wonderful about it that the students can move on to the next page of the lesson after they uh, completed the previous. And if there is a question and they didn't answer it correctly, it sends them back. So it's really very helpful. It's, um, and another. Uh, tool is a, wo a workshop module that allows you to integrate a peer review. Students um, students do peer review before they complete the work, and uh, it's really 
and a wonderful tool of Moodle is badges, and Melly loves it, and I also love it, and a good, good, um, good courses really uh, motivate students to learn, and and um, some I just did a recent reading, a recently reading about the unification of courses, and what teachers do they they remove grading. What they do, they create badges for different levels of students' performance. And they say, they say, if you if you complete these assignments, you will get this badge, badge of explorer, uh, the badge of uh, expert, the badge of implementer or inventor so you can you can set up it's 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 again it's again um it's grading but it's more more interactive more engaging for students um learning and uh we all are competitors we want to succeed in life and uh all uh, these tools really engage students in um, and competition to become better uh, learners. So, asynchronous uh, tools on Moodle are um, outside Moodle. So, th those were inside Moodle, outside Moodle. You can use Present Me, uh, Move Note, uh, some students were creating, or uh, Flipgrid, a, a wonderful uh, tool that encourages students um, interaction and reflection on the course um, so blogs um, YouTube and TV Twitter um, synchronous tools are um, uh, hangouts uh, with IQ Adobe Connect um, so and um, quite a few go um, go meetings, go webinars, um, so there are quite a few. Um, so uh, that's how students construct knowledge by uh, leading the discussions, leading the uh, meetings, uh, facilitating their own meetings, and then at the end of the course they create uh, what they learn uh, about and they present to the rest of the class about their learning outcomes. And so learners are ready for more active online learning, begin construct new knowledge and interaction and drawing upon each other's experiences. So um, and the development is these are all tools that allow for uh, creating knowledge, development of knowledge, and the development of the course.
Um, so these are the tools that students use to develop their knowledge. Uh, Grokster, Screencast-O-Matic, mm -hmm. Socrative, Scoopit, mm -hmm. Nomia, uh, it's an iPad, Jognog, um, 